Hello, in this video I'm going to walk you through an example of multi-page app built with Webpack. You will see the basic configuration, production-ready approach and what pitfalls to avoid. This video is fast-paced, but you can follow the link in the description to download the code and play it with yourself. We are starting on a branch called Simple Multi. Here we have two HTML files, a HTML file and bHTML file, which are almost the same. They on, the only difference is that they are loading different JavaScript files. And depending on which JavaScript file uh, is loaded, we will be replacing uh, either content of element B or element A. Because we are not anymore on the case covered by a default configuration, we have to specify Webpack configuration. So the key for cover our multi-page multi path is the entry points. So we, here we specify two files, two places where Webpack is starting to build a tree of all the files and all the dependencies. Each entry, entry, fi entry file ent entry head to our application has a name and then we re we use this name for um, for designing on the on the name of the output files so in this way webpack knows that when we build our app it's supposed to uh, output two files a file and b file so just for to verify we can see that our page is working as expected. On the page B, we replace the B element, the B placeholder, and on page A, we are replacing the A placeholder. As a next step, we are including our JavaScript files dynamically. So instead of having hard-coded the name and location, we are going to use a uh, HTML, HTML Webpack plugin for, gener for updating our HTML files uh, with, the, with the JavaScript dependencies that we need, from, uh, we need for them. So this is a simple configuration that is repeated for both, uh, for both our HTML files. And we are specifying what chunks, what, uh, what assets should be, should be loaded. The HTML files are being specified as templates. We tell the Webpack uh, HTML, uh, HTML Webpack plugin to inject all the all the necessary files into them, and the output uh, the updated file with the with the with the same file name as the original file. So in our case, it's kind of like. It's uh, it's not really it doesn't make so much difference because because it's just one line that we have removed, but as we are go as we will be going more to a production like a production like configuration, we will have multiple chunks of the multiple files being loaded depending how the how Webpack or optimize the uh, the output, and then it really makes a difference if if we if we have to know what files to include or it's a machine that is making this decision for us. So just to verify that everything works as expected, uh, we have actually two or four different uh, assets emitted. We have the same HTML, the same JavaScript files as before, but this time we are, uh, we are outputting HTML files as well. And here we can see again in our dist folder that the output is still working as expected. Besides the changes we discussed so far, the additional thing is that our dist folder, our output folder, is, is encapsulating our output. So we have both HTML and JavaScript files in the same place which is uh, which is convenient for for our deployments. The next step is small refactoring uh, meant to avoid code uh, meant to avoid code duplication. 
so I took our previous previous uh, previous config and just extracted the, the names of the of the of the files or of, of the sections that of the page that we are working on. So right now we have just uh, just an array and we are iterating. We are mapping over each each entry entry name uh, to the configuration that we, that we want. This uh, this approach I have I have here. Uh, it will allow us to easily add other other webpack uh, webpack plugins if we if we will have uh, if our our config file will become more compl more more complex and will include multiple uh, plugins. So to verify that everything works as expected, uh, pretty much the same as before. And our website is still working just fine. The next step are changes in our core file. This is a file that is shared between uh, A and B JS. And uh, we are making our case slightly more real world like. And we are including a big library in this, in this case, uh, jQuery in our core file. So uh, the webpack changes are uh, including optimization. So right now we are adding this line of splitting chunks. It means that webpack, when it will see uh, that our that our code is is growing big, uh, it will try to optimize to make sure that uh, the browser the user doesn't have to load the same file multiple times, the same code is not spread over multiple uh, JavaScript files when uh, it could be just one file that is being uh, being shared between uh, between different entry points. So we can run our build to see the output and we will see already small changes. So right now we have three different JavaScript files being emitted. The files uh, as previously A and B, but we have this, well, uh, 755.js. We can see that our, our website is, is working just fine. The, the call section is being uh, included and it's being working as expected. And in network tab, I can see that I'm loading multiple files of which this uh, 7755 is the biggest one. And if we go to the different, uh, to our other page, you will see that the, the, the file is the same. So here we can, uh, we see that the, uh, well, the resource size is still big, but only, only very little, very little amount of data was, uh, was interchanged between network. So this is the optimization that is provided to us by, uh, by Webpack. So it, it makes sure that uh, that our our build is 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 uh, well is well distributed. So the paths of the code that are being that are shared uh, between our uh, different different entry points are not being uh, loaded more than necessary. The final touch to the code is that I'm reusing the same. A list of pages in both places. So in our webpack configuration, I moved the list of pages from the plugin page for, from the pl plugin part uh, here on the top of the file, and I'm re I'm using it to generate dynamically a list of entry points. Uh, that means that we have to. Uh, keep our 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 structure uh, very regular. So we are supposed to uh, match the names of the HTML files and the entry entry uh, and and the name of entry JavaScript files. Uh, but I think it's something that we that would be recommended anyway. And uh, well, if we want more flexibility, it's. Uh, it's something that, well, you can always uh, change it depending on the needs of the project. So just quickly uh, double checking that everything runs as expected. 
and the page is still working just fine. So here we will wrap up the, like, let's say production ready or uh, production ready configuration for our multi-page app. And in the next section, I will talk about uh, about the pit, uh, about one of the pitfalls that we should uh, avoid. Uh, when presented with a case like this, uh, we could be tempted, as I was at uh, time, to use this the feature uh, that um, Webpack provides, that is to use the array of configs. So pretty much what we have here right now is just um, we have the uh, we we are using the the, the list of uh, of pages, and instead of um, generate uh, instead of returning an object we are mapping an object with one configuration we are returning an array of multiple configurations so if you try building that it seems to be working just fine um, maybe slightly slower but in the end we are getting the the code that we uh, that we expected and the page is working the problem starts when we are starting to focusing. We start to focus on the on the time. So uh, here we are about like five seconds, and it's actually twice. It's not only well the um, the webpack is using the configuration as arrays. So it's so it's just like running running different builds separately for for different uh, different elements in the in the in the array. So to see better the issue, uh, I just created more files following the same pattern. And uh, well, each file is creating additional object in the configuration array. And now we will see very clearly that well, this, uh, this build will take, uh, take a while. The build was very slow. And we can see that it's the page. The pages are still very, very simple. It's getting more and more slow when we add some page, and we can verify it running with a time command. With time command, we, command we can clearly see that the that the build is getting very, very slow. And then, for a comparison, the very same build. Uh, when we ga uh, when we go back to have to have one only one object, uh, well, we are back on eight seconds compared to thirty something seconds in the in the previous setup. This is clearly more performant, and it's related to the fact that with uh, well with uh, this this array of configs is just. And a workaround for for situations where we would be writing multiple configs for different pages, for completely different pages, the things that are completely disconnected, and uh, it forces Webpack to actually well to uh, to do uh, the whole build separately. So it, it cannot reuse the well. It's it's not reusing what we what. Opt whatever optimization it could done uh, direct internally while building code that is reusing the same uh, well the same parts or or there are some overlap between different um, different files that we are building that's all I hope this video will help with some cases you are working on I'm looking for more cases uh, sim similar to that one that could be useful when presented in that form. If you have one to share, please follow the link in the description see, and see you next time.